one. Hello, my name is Vanessa Price, and I am the host of You're Worth the Price. Today, I have with me a very special guy that's going to be talking to you about funeral things. Mm. We need to know about these things. Sometimes we don't want to hear about it, but just like we came in, we've got to go right back out one day when the Lord calls our name. So he's going to talk to us about some things that he has that he can, you know, give us instruction on or information. And but before we get started, I want to know how you're doing today, Mr. Jonathan, Bishop Jonathan. I am doing phenomenal today. Good. Hey, Vanessa, I'm just glad to be here with you today. I'm, I'm, I, we often have a, it's an ongoing kind of a thing we say in our industry, being seen in the future. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, I see that you have majored uh, in theology and biblical studies at Southwest Western Baptist Theological School. So is that where you became, well, probably we didn't come bishop then, but is that where you got ordained? No, I, I was ordained. Uh, so I, I began ministry at uh, the age of eight. Okay. I actually preached my first sermon at the age of eight years old mm -hmm. and so i i was ordained uh at 17 and so wow. uh studying at southwestern i was already ordained as a minister okay, uh, uh, okay. Uh -oh. yeah i was already kind of well on my way i my got western i had already been in ministry uh, okay oh 20 years so yeah oh so you were kind of ahead i bet you were way ahead when you went to college then right you kind of knew everything about the bible not no not everything everything you know i, I was uh i was uh there was much to learn and still much to learn uh mm -hmm. but uh it was uh, certainly a opportunity and looking now to even continue some educational studies uh because there's always it, 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 it's impossible there's always something fresh something new to discover so uh no i, I was i was ahead in life experiences but, uh just the theological educational side there was still much to learn and i became very enlightened by attending school that's good. That's good. So you, when you went to school, you went for uh, theological studies and you were already, you know, preaching. You made a U-turn sort of, I guess you made a U-turn or maybe you already knew it in your mind. You started doing funeral things. You got into funeral. What made you get into that? Did you always think about that when you were a kid or? So, so right, right about the same time I, uh, I, I got ordained is when I actually started professionally working in the funeral industry at 17. So okay. during, uh, actually still in high school before even finishing high school, but, uh, the, it was for me, the funeral industry was not something that I kind of stumbled upon. Mm -hmm. It was that I kind of uh, later became interested in. Uh, it started when I was seven years old. When I was oh. seven, I, I had predetermined this would be my my primary occupation as an adult. And uh, so, uh, you know, I was the kind of weird kid, you know, uh -huh. that, <laughs> right? the dogs and the cats in the neighborhood, the, you know, dead birds that fell out of the tree, you know, I would have a few then. So I was a little weird then, but but I knew that uh to 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 uh find, you know, not so much the the morbidity of death, but my my passion and my determination was I wanted to discover the beauty in death. And that's much of what uh, what we even do at our firm. Uh, 
we we specialize in finding the beauty in death and so so that's kind of you know early in life i knew the path i wanted to take it was much like when accepting my call in ministry i i sort of accepted this call even before accepting my call in ministry because i knew even before i started preaching that this was what i wanted to do okay wow well i noticed that word you said you kind of stumbled up on it i don't know too many people that stumble up on that but everybody has their own train their own skill <laughs> I think if I right. stumble up on it, I would have got it real, really fast. And then, no, 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 no. <laughs> but we need you. We need you. That's good. That's good. So um, you also were a pre-need counselor at a young age, right? So, so that's actually how I began uh, my uh, work in the funeral industry. Uh, mm -hmm. as a pre-need counselor. Uh, uh, I was doing uh, pre-needs for a firm uh, here in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, worked there doing pre-need. And that's that doing the pre-need uh, taught me the value and the importance of being prepared. Yeah. Uh, it taught, taught me very early the impulse roadmap when you when you meet your demise because one of the difficult things to do is when you when your loved one passes away is to go in a home blind yeah. and I mean by blind is you never have other Never had a conversation with you past the favorite color is blue, you know. Mm -hmm. So so you go in emotional and blind because mm -hmm. you have to figure out what your loved one would have wanted. Uh, so I, the, working as a pre knee counselor, it was it was a very valuable uh, tool for me. Yeah. Uh, especially aspiring to one on establishment, aspiring to be full fledged working as a funeral service practitioner, uh, mm -hmm. that that value of being a pre need counselor really uh, was important. And and to this day, I'm still a pre need counselor, even though okay. have, having an establishment because that's that that pre need is important. It's uh it's the it is it is the life of the funeral home, and it is it is advantageous to the consumer because they are able to put something in place. And I'm probably getting ahead of myself and talking no, about No, that's good. That's good. You know, <laughs> but but yeah, that's where I, I began my uh I began my funeral career as a pre-need counselor. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the pre-need. Uh, what do you do when someone comes in and they really don't know what they want and they have a limited amount of money? What happens then? So building on the pre-need side, it's a little, it's a little more um, beneficial. Uh, I'll, I'll use that term. Uh, when you have, when you are working with a specific budget, uh -huh. uh, pre-need side, you can come in and say, "Hey, I want to, I want to keep this at this amount," and and be able to um, select the things that you can solidify in that pre-need under under that budget, mm -hmm. and and the pre-need. You, if, if you, uh, for instance, you want to spend, you want to set a five thousand dollar amount on a pre-need. You're not you're not paying five thousand dollars at that one time. That's true. You are that five going to be broken down into monthly installments and it you know we i've had individuals come in for pre-need and they're on fixed incomes or they they want to supplement something that they're you know that they are i've had individuals uh cash in like a smaller life insurance policy to mm -hmm. to, to do pre-need and they want to 
things in that amount. And it becomes, it becomes a little more easy because the benefit of that is you are selecting those things that you want to select and incorporate under in that budget, but you're also securing that price uh, for for that that selected service. So, mm-hmm. inflation not affecting it, uh, economy is not affecting it. But if five thousand today, when you when you when you pass away, that that five thousand may have been affected by. In- inflation and doubled to 20 or 30,000, but your loved ones still have the benefit of only paying 5,000 for those goods and services you selected in that mm-hmm. pre need. So it's pre- versus, versus on the ad need side. Uh, and of course, at J.R. Mitchell and Company, we have something that can fit every economic background in budget mm-hmm. and you with a dignified service. However, you are a little more limited on the ad need side when you come in and say, hey, I only have $5,000. Okay. You are objected to what can only be provided for you on an ad need basis within the confines of that budget, okay. which, uh, you know, and, and yes, you are going to be affected by inflation, you know, because yeah. um, th- this year, five thousand dollars may get you something fairly decent mm-hmm. next thousand dollars won't oh, no. and right to be honest any anyone looking to uh secure any type of full service funeral with five thousand dollars uh the average cost of a basic funeral in today's price is eight thousand dollars wow wow and so but you know, thank God for funeral homes such as my firm. You know, we 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 structure things because we understand we understand that there are people who who don't prepare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Understand there are people who have limited means. Uh, we I, I see it quite often, especially with a lot of older people. Mm-hmm. You know. They they took out a life insurance policy thirty years ago yeah. for five dollars, yeah. and and in their mind they have plenty of insurance. That's true. I've heard heard people say this. Older people come in and say, "I got plenty of insurance." And, you know, they'll they'll come and they'll select. You know, they'll sit down with the directors and select a, a fifteen thousand dollar funeral. And when you tell them, hey, 15000 and some change, you know, I got plenty of insurance. I'm going to pay with insurance. And they mm-hmm. slide that policy over to you. Mm-hmm. And they only have a $5,000 policy. And then a, a lot of times they have a loan against the 5000 So it's not even 5000 oh It's three. <laughs> and oh so, so you you have to tell them, hey, this is only $3,000 once mm-hmm. you verify. Mm-hmm. So, you got to come up with twelve thousand more dollars, and, and you know, and and in their mind, they're still not convinced that they didn't have enough insurance, and I and I've seen this happen. Uh, so you know, th- that's why we work to uh, make sure that we have something structured for those who who may not have sufficient insurance, some, those who may not have. Oh, we have a uh, interruption. Can you hear me? Advanced plan in place. That does not mean not to prepare. You know, you, right. you should prepare, prepare, prepare. Mm-hmm. Uh, be- inflation is affecting the cost of funerals every day. Uh, and and the cost of goods and services for fuel is changing, you know, yeah. every year. Imagine, up, yeah. every- Just like everything else. Yeah. And and in these days, now the cemetery property is just as expensive as the funeral. You know, you have cemeteries that are charging five, six, seven thousand dollars just for ground burial, mm-hmm. and that's an at need basis. You know, uh, so it's important even to to. If you have a specific cemetery you're wanting to be buried at, it's important. Put some put the cemeteries offer advanced planning. Uh, 
-hmm. put something in place where you're already paying that off because it just it helps you in the long run because you know eventually eventually you know and and this is just my thought Mm and you know at some point because of inflation and economy you know funeral homes are not going to always probably be able to offer a package that's true (laughs) you know so true uh, you know so true that's just in my opinion i'm not saying that the fact is true but um, and say what what type of packages you have, because you have to you have to understand that just because it's a package deal does not mean it cost us any less to provide that service. Right. It cost us the casket is the same amount as the full service. You know yeah. the the flowers everything that's included in that package still is the same amount we would have to pay for it we're just as a courtesy offering that discount to the families to help accommodate them and offset some of those expenses at a difficult time but that's why it's very important to prepare pre-need life insurance have those things in place because it really it affords you the opportunity to be able to give your loved one a very dignified and uh, uh, elegant and classy uh, home going service, uh, as well as um, just have everything prepared and understand what your loved one wanted. And furthermore, just alleviate that stress off of your family. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I tell it all the time, I prepare. I, I'm prepared because I don't want to be the one that that has to have a GoFundMe or you selling chicken dinners exactly. or whatever. To, exactly. I was going to mention that. Yeah. Because it is, it is really not the responsibility of my loved ones to bury me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is responsibility to have that already situated so that they can, so that they can walk into the establishment mm-hmm. and with ease be yeah. able to cover everything that needs to cover. That's true. That's good. Honor my wishes uh, in a manner I want them honored uh, without any pain. And so that's very important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I know, particularly African American community, we don't like to hear people say, you know, it's, 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 and, and really, in, in my opinion, that's a sad situation. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you, if you don't want to leave them nothing, at least leave them something so they can take care of your final expenses. That's true. You're, exactly. You don't want to leave them nothing, and because you're selfish, mm-hmm. and and don't want you don't want nobody spending your money after you're gone. You know, it it you leave them in a strain as well mm-hmm. to worry about how they gonna put you away when you're mm-hmm. gone, mm-hmm. and so they risk cremating you because that's all they could afford to do and so uh prepare talk about it with your family talk about uh what your your wishes are you know because yeah. we oh we don't know when we're gonna we we, we sure honestly don't. don't know what we're gonna. we sure don't it's happening every we, day we could be talking right now vanessa and mm-hmm. get off of this this interview and either one of us could be right. be gone that's right and, it's like that and, Shame on us if we've not had those conversations with the people that we need to have them with, mm-hmm. especially when, you know, when it's unexpected, you yeah. know, that, yeah. That it, yeah, that's even harder. Even more you, you spend about dying. So mm-hmm. nobody has a clue. You know, they have to figure it out. You know, and even beyond that, you know, it's important. Someone you trust, you need to have. We offer something at J.R. Mitchell and Company uh, to families called a uh, advanced planning guide where those families, it's a free, uh, it's a free uh, tool and resource that people can get. And it, it allows you just to fill in the blanks and fill out well, what good. it is you and And it does not mean you're dying tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It only means that you're leaving a template for right. your loved ones to yeah to follow so they know what your wishes were 
you know, and we offer that to families. And, you know, whether you're even using Mitchell, we, you can you can call our firm and say, hey, can I get one of those advanced planning guides and we'll we'll happily mail it to you. Mm-hmm. And that way That's you good. can begin mapping out what these are. So it's very, very important, very important to have those conversations for people to know you know if something happens to me this this is where this is located Mm -hmm. you know put that stuff in a secure put it in an accessible place as well so that your family and friends know how to get to it amen i agree with that that's very good especially when you talked about the gofundme you know um even when you do gofundme you don't always get the money that you need you know, and you're still right. left behind, you know, you're still struggling. You're still, you walk into the funeral home and you're still like, this is what I got from the GoFundMe. You're in the same situ- situation. So it's better. Like you said, you may as well go ahead and plan for it now. And right. That way you don't have to worry. Right. Right. You know, you know you're, you know, GoFundMe is, you know, thank God for who, for who had the mind to come up with yeah. a fun mechanism thank god for them uh however you know your again our, our lack of preparation puts our loved ones in those positions and yeah. predicaments that they gotta the, the way they're gonna put you away is based upon what they can come up with in a gofundme and that that should exactly. not be put not be placed on your loved ones that burden should not be placed on your family that burden and i'm gonna say it that burden should not be placed on your church that's right that's you know because Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah, they'll be quick to to go to the church and ask Mm -hmm. the church to write yep you -hmm. know and 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 we understand if you've been faithful serving at your ministry you know your your church your church probably should want to help. They should be willing to help. Yeah. But again, it is not responsibility to bury you, to bury your loved one mm-hmm. because we care. So, you know, we we need to understand. And, and you know, I know some people will watch this and say, he's insensitive to truth that, mm-hmm we are often ill-prepared for mm-hmm. this thing. You know, it's amazing, Vanessa. I, I was sharing a conversation with someone the other day. Uh-huh. I said, it's amazing how we prepare for so many other things that are not uh-huh. guaranteed. Mm-hmm. That's true. We'll spend a year planning a wedding. Uh-huh. Or a cruise. <laughs> everyone that may not, and that, that marriage may or may not last. That's right. We are like many times take a year to plan to go on vacation, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but something happened to where that vacation does not, does not come across. But the thing that is guaranteed in life, we don't prepare for. That's right. And I was sharing with someone, I said, do you realize that you are never guaranteed to be born, but you are guaranteed to die? Mm -hmm. And they thought about it. It was like, what do you mean? I said, the only, you, you, you will be conceived. Yeah. You're conceived. But conception does not always yield in birth. That's true. So, That's so true. you are not guaranteed to be born, but you are guaranteed to die. Mm-hmm. But even, even if a woman has a miscarriage or mm-hmm. she has a neophyte, that's, right. that, that's death. Yeah. Whether you understand or not, that is death. Yeah. And, and it, you never came into the world, but you died. And so you, the one, only one thing that is guaranteed in life we, is, the, is the, the one thing we often do not prepare for. Yeah. People get afraid. They are afraid to talk about and it. And so, you know, it's you not, know? you know, you know, I, I understand. They are afraid to talk about it. Yeah. But. But not talking about it does not does not mean not going. That's true. That's true. That's why they need to have the conversations. In the day, you can avoid having the conversation all you want, but 
that you you're ne- you're not going to escape the fact that you're going to die. Mm-hmm. So so mm-hmm. avoiding of you know I I'll, I'll reflect back when my mother when my mother was transitioning. Mm-hmm. And, uh, my brothers and I we were uh, we were just kind of in limbo. Yeah. Uh, we hope. At, at the at the time that she would she would be able to recover and pull through yeah and they kept communicating with me at the hospital asking me you know uh your mother we we need we want to put a port in so we can do dialysis for her but she is refusing it and she said she will not she will not have it done unless you unless you say have it done and we went through that and I, I said, well, OK, you know, I'll speak with the kidney doctor. And so it was an interesting. Long story short, interesting conversation with the kidney doctor and I when, when the kidney doctor and I spoke about the dialysis, he said, well, you know, it's up to you guys if you want to do dialysis. I said, well, you know, give it to me straight. Doc. Is the dialysis going to be beneficial? And he said, well, I'll be honest with, with you, Mr. Mitchell you're only prolonging the inevitable. Wow. And, and like, wow. And, and the right. moment he said that, Vanessa, I, without even consoling my brothers, I said, well, never mind. Yeah. Because there's something that was an absolute fact. Yeah. You're prolonging the inevitable. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's what we often do in this conversation about death. We, we prolong the inevitable. Mm-hmm. And prolong it until it's too late. Yeah, we prolong it to the point to where we can't have the conversation because now we've met the inevitable, mm-hmm. and right. uh, so it's important. You know, life is uncertain, but death is sure, mm-hmm. and we have to have these conversations with our loved ones. That is so true. This is really good, and. I hope people are listening to what you're saying. I'm sure a lot of people are, but really take heed to this. Can I go back to the GoFundMe thing again? It's hard. You know, say a mother loses her child or whatever. It's not easy for her asking people to contribute to a GoFundMe or have somebody else do it. It's always better to go and, you know, like you said, go to the pre-need service, get this taken care of. He has packages for you that you can you know, pay on and you just be ready when the time comes. The person knows where to go. That certain drawer. This is what I have. This is what I need. It's already taken care of. Go to the funeral home. That's it. You don't have to worry about anything else. And, like and I'll, I'll, I'll even share this, Vanessa, because this is another thing that we all think about. Mm-hmm. Parents, please hear me. Put something in place for your children. Yeah. You know, it is nothing wrong with having life insurance yeah. on your, if you have, and, and most most m- most insurance providers, mm-hmm. you can add your child as a writer on your life insurance with mm-hmm. sometimes with no additional charge mm-hmm. and with only just a couple of dollars or more per month. And you can cover your child with insurance, please. Mm-hmm. Put insurance on your children. Yeah. You know, there are short graves in the cemetery. Mm-hmm. They are long graves. Yeah. You know, and, and depending on the age of your child, it, it can be just as expensive as, to, to bury your child as it is to bury an adult loved one. Mm-hmm. And, and I know, again, these are conversations we don't want to have, mm-hmm. but it's not saying that we are we are thinking something is going to happen to our children, but it's saying that we are prepared. Yeah. You know, we yeah. spend a lot of time preparing to live, but we don't spend any time preparing to die. Don't spend any time preparing to die. You're right. You're right. We we, we work to, to make all the money we can. Mm-hmm. The, the, the big this car, live in the biggest house, the most, mm-hmm. have anything set up for when when we meet demise or when the unexpected occurs, not just death, 
you know, people invest in long-term, short-term disability. Uh -huh. These are things, and, and this is one of the things we do our Mitchell and company, we try to help to educate families. It's not just about dying, but it's just about all around being prepared, yeah. having yeah. things in place. Because again, you never know what tomorrow holds. You never know what's going to happen. You know, you could it, you could be in a car wreck tomorrow and, and have injuries that could paralyze you for the rest of your life. And it, it pays when you, you know, and I, I know we often look at what where where is the immediate return on what I'm? But when you're investing in these things, and and I hear people all the time say, "Well, I'll never need that." You never know when you'll need it. That's true. But That's so true. It, it but when you when that time when if if and when that time happens mm -hmm. in your life, you you will look back in retrospect and say, "You know what? I'm so glad I got this. So glad. I'm so, so glad." glad. I, you know, a few dollars a, a month, $15, $20 a month, mm -hmm. ended up having set and secure financially at a difficult time in the moment in my life. So the, not just death, but just being prepared for unexpected occurrences altogether right. Right. is what I, you know, encourage to do, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because life happens. Life happens and oh, so you got to be prepared for life happenings and mm -hmm. you got to be for the certain prepared for the certainty of death. That's right. I know I'm talking a lot, but you know, that's I'm, okay. That's, I'm that's okay. That's okay. Okay. Well, you all have heard it here. Um, this is Bishop Jonathan Mitchell, and um, we're actually going to continue this next week. So I want you all to come back and listen to the continuation of what he has to say, because he's telling you some good information and you really need to take it, take heed of it, just like I said. So we're going to end it here. Thank you for joining. You're worth the price. Jonathan, it was good to have you today and we will resume on next week. Okay. Thank you, Vanessa. All right, everybody stay on top of the world. Remember that. And remember, you are worth the price.